Adventures, I'm back and I'm going to review a Doctor Who story called Dear the Daleks. Exterminate! Dear the Daleks was broadcast in January 1972 and is a four-parter. It's the first of four Dalek stories that featured in the John Pertwee era. The first was Dear the Daleks, followed by Frontier in Space. The Daleks appear in the last episode of that one. Then Planet of the Daleks, and then Death to the Daleks. John Pertwee didn't like the Daleks and couldn't understand their popularity. So it's ironic that he featured in four Dalek stories. Dear the Daleks was the first story of season 9. It saw the return of the Daleks that were last seen in Evil of the Daleks in 1967. That was a five year gap. And it's also the first time we see them in colour on TV. Although there was two colour movies in the 60s. It's also the first time we see the Ogrons who would later return next year in Frontier in Space. And we also see a gold Dalek. Dear the Daleks was directed by Paul Bernard, written by Lewis Marks, the script editor was Terence Dix, producer Barry Letts, and music by Dudley Simpson. A special edition came out in 2011 with new CGI effects. The special edition also has the Dalek voices redone by Nicholas Briggs, as the original Dalek voices in the story were poor. The novelisation came out in 1974 by Terence Dix and Dear the Daleks was one of the first stories to come out on VHS in 1986. Dear the Daleks stars John Pertwee as the Third Doctor, Katie Mannon as Joe Grant, Nicholas Courtney as the Brigadier, Richard Franklin as Captain Mike Yates, John Levine as Sergeant Benton, Audrey Woods as the Controller. So this story is about the Daleks who take over Earth in the future because there's been a World War 3. It also features a time paradox where they're trying to kill this politician, Reginald Stiles. And they think he starts World War 3. I think he uh, blows this building up. So they're out to destroy him by blowing them up. But it's them who cause the explosion. So it's totally weird, like a paradox. It also features the Daleks after a five year gap. It's best when old enemies uh, they wait a long time before they bring them back, like they did with the Cybermen in Earthshock. Only trouble is these days they seem to use the Daleks every bloody year, instead of giving them a nice long gap. All the unit teams in this story, Mike Yates, Sergeant Benton, the Brigadier, Joe and the Doctor, and they all work well together. It's interesting this story because um, Mike Yates, he seems to bully Sergeant Benton a lot, ordering them about. You saved my life. Sergeant Benton! Sir! Just what do you think you're up to, Benton? Uh, I was just checking, sir. Yes, well, I want you to go and check on number three patrol. Hey, I know why bloody Mike Yates doesn't like Benton in this story. Because they're both trying to get in bloody Joe Grant's knickers. <laughs> Hey, you could have a point there, Bones. I know what bloody colour they are as well, Phil. Red. You can take up a bloody skirt all the time in this story. <laughs> but what makes this story really special is a special edition. It's got tons of special effects, you know, special CGI effects. You say more Daleks, you say proper extermination scenes where you say, like, the skeleton. There's also a weird effect when... They shoot someone, you say the body explode into particles. That looks totally weird. There's also a good effect where you say the Dalek base, say outside with ships flying around outside. But what really makes it for me is Nicholas Briggs who does the Dalek voices again. He really does them for this story because they sounded really bad in the original version. They make such a massive impact when you hear his voice doing the Dalek uh, voices. He makes them really sound evil and louder. Exterminate them! Exterminate them! Exterminate them! Exterminate them! I've never really been one for um having like effects redone in stories, but in this case it makes such a massive difference. They did an excellent job on the special edition. And it's so good I'll not bother watching the old edition. You get both versions though on, on the day by day. So you can watch either. So episode one, it's a four-parter. Episode one, you, you, you see the Ogrons for the first time. 
they're really good. I, I like the makeup on the faces and the, the, the tall, really menacing. Oddly enough, you, you say the Daleks around the 13 minute mark. Usually, first episodes have the Daleks appear right at the end, like the final scene. But for some reason, they decided to have them halfway through episode one. Report. There's not really a, a dramatic effect when you first see them. It's more of a jump because you're expecting to see them at the end of the episode. It's like a tradition. So uh, that, that was a little bit disappointing. I wish they'd have kept them right till the end. Episode 2 has more of the effects. You see Mike Yates bullying Sergeant Benton and Joe going into the future. In episode 2 you see the Doctor meeting a Dalek right at the end in a tunnel. But episode 3, I think episode 3 is my favourite. It's mostly set into the future, future Earth. The Doctor goes there looking for Joe and he gets captured and interrogated and I thought Pertwee's performance was excellent. He's like exhausted and he's shouting at the guard and he seems with a controller as well. I thought it was perfect. He's really on form. And the guy who plays the controller is really patronising. He's a bit OTT though. But uh, a very good character still. They're a form of higher anthropoid. They used to live in scattered communities on one of the outer planets. They make very useful servants. Hey, Phil! Why has the controller got bloody silver makeup on his bloody face? Looks soft as bloody shit. Hey, he was in bloody Black 7. Yes, he was, Bones. He was in Black 7. Played a guy with silver paint on his face in that as well. An episode called Gambit. I feel you looked a right bloody sissy and all. Like fucking Danny LaRue. On the candy store down Paradise Road. Like where the doctor's uh, getting kind of like a mind probe on him. And you see uh, images of William Hartnell and Patrick Troughton on a scanner. So I thought that was great continuity. And they're going on about the Daleks working people to death. It's like uh, they've got the earth like a, almost like a sweatshop factory where they're making them flog on, working. And they want the production raised by 10%. They're really evil, the Daleks, in this story. And let me saw it for us. Um, some great effects at the end. You say more of the Daleks attacking the building. Like in the original, you, you could tell there was only three Daleks. But in this one, there the does seem like an army of Daleks. I thought Joe was a little bit of a bimbo though in this. Uh, usually I like her, but she, she did come across as a bit, a bit dumb. <laughs> cool, Phil! That Dalek's a lucky bugger. I wish I had the Dalek sink plunger. If I had that bugger, I'd be sniffing it all night. <laughs> And the Brigadier is starting to get played a little bit more for laughs. Not as sort of like serious as he usually is in the, the earlier Pertway stories. But I thought Pertway was excellent. And it was also interesting seeing a gold Dalek. That, that was unusual. And now uh, all the Pertway Dalek stories, uh, I class this as the best one. The first and the best one he did. So uh, overall I thought it was excellent. The original version, without the new effects and voices, I, I would have given... A 9 out of 10. But with this new version, it gets top marks. 10. 10 out of 10. Massive improvement. You think boys do like it. Top marks, Phil. You can't beat the 1970s Doctor Who stories. Yeah. Then these bloody new buggers. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Like, subscribe and share. Bye. Bye. Very loyal. Do please sit down.